Coulson and the team go after the Superior to get Mace and May back. But is it a rescue or a trap? Well, considering the trail of breadcrumbs they're following, I'm pretty sure it's a trap. It's Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 4, Episode 14. The Man Behind the Shield. Hey everyone, D here, and welcome to this week's review of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. So, of course, we're entering spoiler territory, you have been warned. Alright, so, we are chugging away towards the end of the LMD arc, and, as the old story goes, before there is light, there must be darkness, or it's always darkness before there is light. You know how it goes. Um, and this is sort of the issue bringing that up. We have the pursuit of the superior this episode. Little globe-trotting adventure and a little backstory on Coulson and May on their first mission, which sort of links up to the origin story of uh, the superior, as Coulson puts it. Um, and a little uneven in this episode, in my opinion. There were some good points and there were some kind of bad points, kind of disappointing uh, feels like maneuvering in order to set up the big grand finale, uh, but maybe not as smooth as, as it could have been. So, uh, let's get down to some specifics here. All right, so, as I said, the backstory sort of leading into all of this is, okay, not the first adventure with Coulson and May, an early adventure. I think their first one was the one when they were undercover as a couple that they sort of talked about in Coulson's unsure hands. Um... But really, we're dealing with the, the collection of an 084 of an alien object from Russia. Things don't really go that well. It gets sort of interrupted by some eight, by some uh, Russian agents, and they're defeated, and Colson and May go out. Great. It was nice seeing kind of their young versions. Not a big fan of uh, young May's wig. Uh, her hair on that was not... Uh, totally complimentary. Uh, but there was some nice banter back and forth. We get to see May in the more jovial, happier, playful personality uh, that Coulson had referred to her being long before the Calvary incident. So fun to sort of see a little bit of this. And of course, really, we are catching early flirtation and sort of early connection between the two. A lot of that banter back and forth was very playful, was very fun. We get to see early context. I love her statement about him wearing glasses because of his eye contact. I always maintain eye contact. It was just, that was, that was great. Those were great little character moments and it's kind of fun seeing kind of early Coulson, a little more fun, a little more jovial, a little more playful. Uh, but we are getting their little tension there, even in his story to the Russian agents. He sort of admits there might be a little bit of tension. Uh, could they go on a bait? What date? Well, don't know. She's going to go see this guy. He's a psychiatrist. Obviously, that's Andrew. Obviously, who she fell for. So, while it's a little cheesy in its setup, uh, it's nice always to get a little backstory and to see sort of a different depth of these, uh, these, these two agents' characters. Um, but this is all playing into the big origin story, which really is kind of the big wrap up of the main thrust of this episode is we're diving into the superior, his motivations, this group that went to collect uh, uh, the 084 and then got defeated by Coulson. They were his group, and so they got tortured and killed, and that pushed him into pursuing alien stuff, and then he keeps finding Coulson's name, and then blah, 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 blah. Okay, you guys know how much I love Zach McGowan. I really enjoyed him, his vein in black sails. I'm excited to see him here. But honestly, once his character sort of got revealed, I found it to be rather weak. I mean, when we didn't know a whole lot as just this powerful Russian industrialist pursuing, you know, Coulson and, and you know, that there was something kind of behind it. When we got down to the brass tacks, it was really, it's like, you're an alien conspiracy theorist with motivation, with revenge motivation. That's it. Your people got killed. This guy was behind it. And now you are crafting what is very clearly uh, an alien conspiracy idea. Now, of course, some of this is true. <laughs> but the way that it was presented out, it really, to me, it, it, it kind of denigrated the character. Even his discussions with Mace, as Mace is tied up in his motivation. He's like, you will admit to me that Coulson is pursuing his alien agenda. Really, alien agenda? You actually use those words. You know, you will admit to me before we are done. Why? 
Why do you care if Mace is going to admit it? Now, we do find out at the end this was all kind of even a secondary larger ruse in order to pull the main uh, agents in, Coulson and Mac, and they already had uh, Mace there and, and Quake and, and all of these agents. Okay, so I understand that. But the character there that seemed to drive all of it, I just, I, I did care. Coulson's final statement to him when he's just like, you know, I don't know who you are. I've been on hundreds of missions. I don't even remember the one that I was sent to go get, the thing that I was supposed to go get. Don't even remember what it was. You were just a red shirt stopping me from saving the world because that's what I do and I don't care. I mean, really, it was a great form. It was a great, you know, uh, it's a great picture for Coulson, a great position for him to step in of who his character was. I love that. I love Coulson's point of view at looking at, at uh, the superior because Anton Ivanovich, man, you were just, you're boring. You were not, that, that removes you interestingly. And now, I don't know if you're dead, not, I mean, you're not dead. That's what Ada said at the end, but you're probably just going to be thrown into an LMD at this point. They're going to hook you up into the, uh, the little mind matrix there, uh, <laughs> the framework, and you're going to be in an LMD body and that's how you're going to be used because even filth, you know, has its purpose. Um, but I have to say that was, to me, that was one of the, the weaker aspects of this. It was just, it was just a little disappointing when we got down to the superior's big origin story. <sighs> Boring. Another big theme in this episode, and it's been continuing through a lot of the watchdog stuff and the big inhumans reaction, uh, but very specifically pointedly here uh, as well is Racism, prejudices against inhumans, against robots, against anything different. Uh, we have the superior with his pursuit against inhumans and filth. Certainly not really happy with Ada either. A lot of animosity between the two of them and kind of a weird animosity. So I have to say, Zach, you still have charisma even when you're being a douchebag. So we have all of that, which again has been that clear watchdogs through line. But we also have Max prejudice against robots, and that seemed to play off very strongly against Fitz. Uh, Mac and Fitz have had a very strong, positive relationship, so I don't really like this direction. I understand. I enjoyed Mac's reaction against the robot invasion, being the only one prepared for the robot apocalypse. That was funny. That was hilarious. Here it's taken a little darker, and I didn't really appreciate him going after Fitz with the idea of this is something that you have created. You created the framework. Okay, well, this is the first that we've heard of the framework, that this was a training uh, program for agents and sort of a 3D matrixy type stuff. This is the first that we've heard of that, but I guess Fitz has been involved in that and that is what Radcliffe has used uh, in order to, to build the whole major framework of the world that he's using. And I did like the idea with those, I have to say, of spreading the computer power out over the whole planet. It's kind of like an internet type thing, only instead of storing information, it's using the computer power. And there's a lot of stuff they do of crowdsourcing computer-wise. Uh, NASA did it in order to uh, crunch um, data off the Hubble telescope and, and a lot of radio uh, uh, telescope data. It's a nice thing using a little bit of background computing off of each computer and the sum of that gets a lot of work done. And that seems to be what uh, Radcliffe is doing with the framework here. And, and I like that. I mean, that's a nice big, you know, expansion off of what Fitz was able to do. And obviously that's what Fitz says. That's why he has, why Radcliffe has the dark hole. This allows him to do the impossible. So that was cool with the framework and getting that history. But knowing that Fitz was behind that, and of course Fitz has helped Radcliffe in the initial designs of Ada, now he gets Max Iyer. And I, I didn't think it was totally fair. Now Mac did acknowledge that Fitz is a good person, but he's worried about that line between scientist and mad scientist. And, and some of us have kind of discussed this uh, in comments over the past uh, few episodes. But I just, I didn't, you know, I didn't really like that, that that was there. It was, in some ways, it's a harshness that I didn't never really felt between those two characters. It's also kind of a little bit easy as just throwing anger and hatred. You are behind this, so I must now hate you. But of course, he's got Gemma, who is his support, his rock. And 
maybe if we're even just trying to bring that that bit of a low to bring the high, showing that support that Gemma has for Fitz and turning him around and saying, hey, you create things. It's the same argument that Fitz used against Mac that Gemma uses to support Fitz is just because something is created, it can be used for good or for evil. How things are used are not necessarily the response of the creator. Though being aware of the things that they can do, you know, sort of is. So, again, we're dealing with those, those prejudices, and I think that that's something... Uh, it gave Fitz an arc uh, in this episode, uh, but maybe a bit of a manufactured one. Just maybe a bit, a, a bit too much. All right, and the ending. And I have to say that whenever a bunch of people all show up kind of separately by themselves into one meeting area, that's, that's sort of an initial sign that something has gone wrong. That there's something not right with it. And I have to say, I am glad that Gemma picked up very quick, that this is not something that was dragged out. With these shorter arcs, they don't have time to drag anything out. It makes for generally much smarter script work, much smarter characters. Um, so that was good. It does seem that Fitz and Gemma are both still human. I mean, honestly, either one of them could be switched, but that's sort of where it seems to be playing out, uh, that it was Coulson, Mac, Mace, and Daisy that have all been switched. Also, you knew something was wrong when Coulson wasn't continuing his uh, pursuit of trying to rescue May, but just took the injured Mace right back to S.H.I.E.L.D. I mean, the submarine was still right in front of them. It could have easily taken a couple of agents to go uh, take Mace back and Coulson still could have pursued the submarine or at least ordered somebody to keep track of it with the couple of aircraft they have right above the base. So, you know, that was, that was a bit of a sign. Uh, now, I have been theorizing, as you guys know, that Mac has already been switched out as an LMD. Nothing that happened tonight changes that. He could still be anti-robot in the character of, uh, of Mac. Um, and he could have helped, you know, once Coulson and Mace got together and Mac could have been out in the elevator or whatever and on their way down, and he knocked him out, turned, programming went off, knocked him out, and went. Or Mace could have helped transfer uh, uh, Coulson there and do it all of that. How they got Quake, maybe it was poison in the, in the knives. She didn't seem to be responding to any of that afterwards, so. Anyway, it, it, it could have been any of those. What I'm saying is whether or not Mac was an LMD before or the, he is now an LMD and I was completely wrong, it doesn't really matter because now we know that they all are. And now they're going to be infiltrating uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. And that seems to be the whole point behind this particular mission was just to sucker them in, capture the leadership, turn them into LMDs, and then send them back to do whatever destruction work that they need to do. Uh, that seems to have been what Radcliffe was referring to when he popped out and was talking about the hardware's already done, we're ready for transmission. I'm assuming those are all the LMDs. Now, why Radcliffe is spending so much time uh, in the framework, that's what I'm curious about. And I am wondering, because this is episode 6, episode 7 for LMD is next week. If they are doing the same equal size arc for the next, uh, equal length arc for the next one, that's going to be another seven episodes, so next week should be the end of LMD. If it goes any longer, you're going to have a shorter and shorter arc for the, the, the third bit. How they are bringing things up, because, I mean, they're, they're, so they're giving a lot of room to cover, because it's not only discovering and defeating the LMDs, we have to get May back, we have to figure out what's going on with the framework, they've got to find Radcliffe. It could be that they are setting up for the third arc to be something that Radcliffe is going on, Maybe they have to go in and get May. It's going to be Agents of the Matrix. It's Daniel, yeah, I'm, I'm giving you Daniel Burnell. You threw that one out in the comments last week. I loved it. And I would still watch that. That would still be awesome. Uh, I don't know which way they're going in. It might be something like this. might be something completely different. I'm expecting the Superior to be turned into an LMD, but maybe there is going to be some other weird dark hold thing that's going to twist him around. It seems, it seems kind of weak sauce to use Zach McGowan in like two, three episodes and toss him aside. <coughs> he's a good actor. He's very, you know, he's, he's very charismatic on screen. Um, I don't know. Maybe that's, that's the only arc that's kind of a waste for that particular character. I was really hoping the superior would end up being more superior. 
I mean, seriously, you're going to do a one-on-one -on -one fight with Quake that just doesn't seem smart. Uh, anyway, so, <coughs> pardon me, those seem to be the direction that we're going to be going in uh, with, with, those are my guesses of where we're going to be going in for the rest of the season. Um, but for here, at least, we are ending up with some agents heading into S.H.I.E.L.D. headquarters and about to mess some things up, and that gives us a lot of ground to cover um, for the next episode, if that's going to be the end. And then where's the arc going to go from there? All right, just a couple of small things. Uh, one, if you are ever a prisoner and the door is left open, that is a trap. That is the universal sign of trap. Also, anything in Nome, Alaska. No, I'm kidding. But not really. If they're going to go all the way up to Nome, Alaska, you know that there's got to be a trap also. These are just, these are signs, people. We should pay attention to them. You know, Mace has a lot of heart, um, but very few combat skills. Mace, if you survive this, you know what the next thing you have to do. Training, my man. Training, training, training. Um, the phone in the skull, that was awesome. Gave a whole little light-up effect. I just thought that looked great. Why is it that Americans poorly speaking foreign languages is funny? I don't know. Coulson with his bad Russian just seemed appropriate. Honestly, I didn't know it was bad. I thought he was intentionally doing it that way. I could buy that from Coulson. All right, and strikes of the coincidence gods. Um, really, Phil, the superior is going to be the first in the first room that you enter in all by yourself. Him and his team just there waiting for you. It just seems a little too easy. Also, Quake, you drop a ceiling on the superior's head. That doesn't finish him. You didn't even bother to check if he had a pulse or not or conscious. You could have gotten up. Just, you don't just drop a ceiling on him and go, all right, he's taken care of, and walk away. That's going to bite you on the butt. All right, so I think we're going to wrap things up for this week. Uh, next week, we have the LMDs entering S.H.I.E.L.D. Well, they're already in S.H.I.E.L.D., but now they're going to start wrecking havoc. How long that's going to last? Like I said, there is a lot of ground to cover. If this is going to be the end of the LMD arc, where are they going to next? We've got a lot of things that have been wrapped up. And the longer LMD goes, the shorter the last arc is going to be. So I don't want them to just throw out something quick and cheesy. I want them to do some good investment. They've moved things along really quickly, really tightly, for the most part, uh, in these past two arcs. So I'm really hoping that we get a good conclusion and a quick moving forward into whatever is going to be next. So, if you did enjoy this review, please hit that like. Thoughts, comments, where do you think we're going? Do you think we're about to end this up? Where do you think the next arc is going to be? What is Radcliffe doing in the framework? Thoughts, ideas, throw those down in the comments section below. You can always catch me on Twitter and Instagram. I'm at Darren Jakes. Uh, but, you know, you don't need to miss anything. If you're not already a subscriber, come on, join the group. We have lots of fun. You can do that by hitting my face right there. That's a subscribe button. And I will throw up our latest review right up here. You can check out some of the other shows that we are doing here. So I think that's going to wrap things up for me for tonight. So I am D, and I'm out of here. I'll catch you guys next time. Take it easy. Bye-bye.